Hey folks, here at OS Reviews. This is part two of our throwback retro review of the Kobe Kairos Android tablet, one of the earliest Android tablets and one of the most inexpensive options at the time that sold for under um, 200 bucks with a seven inch resistive touchscreen display and only four gigs of built-in storage. It ran originally on Android version 2.1 slash 2.2, so a very, very early version of Android. And um, the, you know the first generation model that came out without any software updates actually only ran Android version 1.6, so this goes almost all the way back. Construction quality though was pretty good, and we checked out mostly the hardware in part one of our retro throwback look a few months ago, but today we'll be mostly discussing the software and how it operates, because um, I gave it a bit, of a, a bit of a charge after finding the proprietary charger again, and uh, I was able to power it on. So we can see here that the display is not that bad as far as the brightness, but it is not great as far as viewing angles are concerned. And since it is a resistive panel, you do have to apply an uncanny amount of pressure in order for the icons and things to move around. But it still holds a charge. It still works for about a day and a half before you need to recharge it. So that much um, I still give the company props for. You can see the main display here is populated by your favorite widgets and icons. Um, everything seems quite oversized coming in from a newer version of Android. And you'll notice that even the icons in the app Troy has a bit of lag moving across the screen because of that 600 megahertz single core processor. Um, not too much apps even going on here, there's not too much bloatware, but you will find something like a calibration app because for a resistive screen it loses its uh, precision over time so you have to recalibrate it with a standard fingernail or a pen. But there are some standard, standard essentials on here like a calculator, a basic WebKit based browser, there's no Play services or no Google services in here so there's only proprietary versions of an app store. and. And um, there's also a proprietary ebook reading app if you want to read a few books. So not the best experience in the world, but you could kind of sideload apps if you wanted to at the time. The biggest shock for me is that this device still does work as far as general, very light usage. Obviously, if you want to play back games or are super demanding things and multitasking, it's just going to crash. But uh, for basic tasks, I found myself kind of surprised that it still does work. So a nice... Um, nice thing to, to see here. No front-facing camera, so no Skype calls, but you can see that the device still does work as kind of an ebook reader. A little bit of lag in between chapters, but not too bad once a chapter is fully loaded. And you can see you have some basic ebook reading options. It does have an accelerometer that uh, is fairly responsive and easy to use. This is actually a back key that takes you back one screen and to access a home and menu you tap on the top keys which is kind of a bizarre placement uh, for these keys to be perfectly honest but it does work. This is a proprietary widget that, that uh, Kobe designed at the time, and if we take a closer look at some of the other widgets on here, there are pretty typical ones, but uh, also a little bit more unusual ones that you'll find that have been kind of tweaked by the, the company here. The biggest, uh, the nicest thing about this is there isn't too much bloatware as far as apps, so you do get a fairly clean install. Um, live wallpapers can be found on here, so we have a few options like gallery, grass, um, puller, UV meter, and of course the iconic Nexus theme. Obviously this will drain the battery faster, but it does run live wallpapers you know, decently, so it does have enough processing power to handle that, so you can see how that experience is like. Track down notification drawer, very large, um, huge icons. So in retrospect, maybe giving this to a kid or giving it to an elderly as their first kind of tablet wouldn't be the worst idea in the world um, just to, you know, do some very basic tasks and because the icons are so large, um, it's very comfortable to read. There's also things for the basic gallery. There is a basic music player, nothing too surprising. In settings, we can really tell the age of this thing, but you can look at uh, about device and then see that it's running on version 2.1 currently and you know update version 1 the model number MID 7015 so very generic as far as that's concerned um, if we try to go into the browser next and see if it still loads, it seems like it still will. Um, no multi-touch at all because it's a resistive screen here and you have to rely on the uh, icons on the bottom there to zoom in. You can see that there's definitely some lag going on and the keyboard is a 
pretty decent keyboard in the sense that it takes up most of the display, but it's uh, not very great to type on because it is resistive. But um, you will be able to you know, do some basic to check your weather and uh, basic update info. But if you go to the New York Times or super complex pages, it definitely will lag and um, not load up everything properly. It's going to run out of memory and crash the browser. So definitely not the best web browsing experience anymore. And it wasn't even the best experience back in the day to begin with. So more than anything, surprising that it does still function for the most part. Um, other apps on here, there is a, uh, oh, there's a YouTube player on here. So there's a third party YouTube client and it launches into basically a mobile version of YouTube site. But the experience is not bad. If you look go to mobile YouTube, you can still play back videos at uh, 480p. It does still run fairly well. You can scrub between the video. And if you're watching back videos, it's uh, decent enough if you hold it in your hands and, and not share the, the content with other people since the viewing angles aren't so great on this super reflective screen. But um, it still makes a respectable video player and you can again sideload your own content onto the memory here and use it as a mp4 player and that is still a feature that does work surprisingly well on this on this device so anyways that's i guess our part two and final look back at the kobe chirals i just found found this device to be pretty fascinating because it just reminds me how far we've really come from the early days of android now with capacitive screens octa-core processors lightning fast and tons of ram that almost rivals laptops um, you can do quite a lot with these tablets now but uh, back then it was chunky it was hefty it was kind of difficult to use it was very sluggish um, but you did have the same wireless connectivity options that you have today um, but on a very early build of android so Kobe Kairos was also, you know, one of the early budget models that brought the price range for Android devices down to things that consumers could really afford. And unfortunately, I don't think Kairos is still producing electronics anymore. So this remains kind of part of uh, electronic history that uh, back in the day, I always wanted to check out. But uh, at last, I've gotten a hands-on kind of throwback look at this tablet. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been our look back at the soft four part of the Kobe Kairos early 4GB Android tablet.